to another reading of It's a Kid's Life Christmas Countdown. Now, as promised, we have an extra special guest called Maisie. Now, Maisie, <laughs> who's giving me a kiss, um, is one of Lola's puppies as well. And we fell in love with her so much that we couldn't let her go and we decided to keep her. And she is a very mischievous, seven month old puppy now and I don't think she's going to sit still because <laughs> she's so excited by all the Christmas decorations in here she just tries to eat them so we thought we'd let her say hi to you and then maybe we'll let her go and have a play in the garden what do you think Danny because she's definitely not going to sit nice and still like Odie. Do you want to go and play Macy? Yes, go on then, you go and play. Oh. Right, you take her out for me and okay. I will read you guys the next chapter. Okay. See you in a bit. <laughs> I will read you guys the next chapter in It's a Kid's Life Christmas Countdown. So this is chapter 16. I can hear Maisie playing outside. <laughs> I think she's having fun in the garden. Okay, chapter 16. Right, Tommy. This is serious now, I said to my best friend as we sat in his awesome treehouse the following day. I need to submit my entry to the newspaper by Monday. That means that we have to find out who St Christmas is this weekend. Otherwise, I will have to go with one of my other ideas. I think if push came to shove, I could write a pretty good article about our Christmas show. But it wouldn't compare to the headline news of revealing the identity of the mystery Father Christmas in sunglasses that everyone was talking about. OK, let's look at the facts we have so far, said Tommy. We know he is in fact a he, as you saw the stubble under his beard on that photo. Yep, I agreed. Unless he's a woman with a little facial hair problem, like Miss Harry. Miss Harry was the dinner lady in charge of puddings. She had a big mole on the side of her face with three long black hairs growing out of it. No matter how hard you tried, it was impossible to look at anything other than her hairy mole while she was dishing a big dollop of custard into your bowl. True, said Tommy, but he walks like a man too, and he has big feet. How do you know he has big feet? I asked Tommy curiously. Look, you can see here, he said, pointing at a picture on Instagram on his phone. Sure enough, there was a photo of St Christmas delivering dog treats to the local dog home. He had been captured bending down next to a dog that looked like a cross between a Labrador and a sausage dog. His black boot was almost the entire length of the dog's body. Yep, definitely a man, I said, nodding my head thoughtfully. We gazed at Tommy's phone in silence as he, growled, as he scrolled through the array of photos that the public had managed to catch of the man in action. Look here, I said, stretching my fingers across the screen of the phone to enlarge a photo. You can see his hairy knuckles as he puts money in that parking meter. Ew, I hope I don't get hairy knuckles when I'm older, said Tommy, screwing his face up in horror. Apparently it's hereditary, I told him, feeling wise. Rob has hairy knuckles and toes. I'm just hoping I take after mum and not him when I grow up. All this is doing is confirming that whoever he is, he's a man. We need something else, like a tattoo or the sound of his voice or something. He could have a distinctive accent, I exclaimed. That could narrow it down loads. Like if he had an Irish accent, he could be that guy who works at the cafe down the road from school. Yeah, and if he had an Australian accent, he could be that guy who you heard calling his dog Benny Boy in the park. That was so funny when you turned around to answer him thinking he was talking to you. Hilarious, I replied sarcastically. Who would call their dog Ben anyway? It's obviously a person's name. Dogs should be called Obi or Lola or Princess, not Ben. Princess? questioned Tommy dubiously. Well, of course I wouldn't call a dog princess. It's just an example, like Lottie's dog. I hadn't spoken to my girl friend Lottie for two whole weeks. I made a mental note to call her sometime over Christmas. I would have to stay up really late and then sneak under my covers to call her whilst mum and dad were asleep because of the huge time difference between Australia and England. 
I quickly worked out in my head that if it were about 11pm here, it would be about 8am in Australia. Not that I think about what time it is much, Relotis. Of course, that would be a bit stalker-like. Honestly, I don't. Maybe just once or twice a day. Okay, who am I kidding? I have an Excel spreadsheet printed out and hidden under my bed with all of the corresponding times on. I made it a few months back, just after she moved to Australia. Lola is a person's name as well, said Tommy, determined not to let it drop. Okay, okay, I said, admitting defeat as he snapped me out of my Lottie and G's daydream. I guess dogs can be called Ben too. So, Benny boy, let's see if anyone has uploaded a video of this guy so we can hear his voice, said Tommy. Great idea, I replied, but I warn you now, if you call me Benny boy again, we might have a replay of the time you fell out of my treehouse courtesy of my overzealous cushion throwing. Capiche? Okay, Ben, he said, saying my name slowly and deliberately. I scrolled through the mass array of pictures that people had been uploading to Instagram. Wait, go back, said Tommy. Look there, there's a video of him when he was doing that ridiculous dancing in the town centre to make people laugh. Somebody had managed to get so close to St Christmas that they hadn't just captured his embarrassing dancing, they had also captured his atrocious singing. Not only was he busting some rather questionable moves to Uptown Funk, he was also singing along. I sat there alongside Tommy, my mouth opening wider and wider in disbelief. Those dance moves, that singing voice, they were unmistakable. There was only one person in this town who sang as badly as that and danced like there was no one watching, when in fact hundreds of people were watching. I know who it is, I said in a barely audible voice. What? said Tommy, still gazing at the screen for clues. I know who St Christmas is, I said again more loudly this time. Tommy looked at me with wide eyes. Benny boy, sorry, Ben, he said. There are thousands of people living in and around Guildford. How on earth could you possibly know this person? I promise you, I know him, I replied with a more confident tone this time. Grab a notebook and pen, I said grinning. We are about to make front page news. <gasps> Exciting, so Ben thinks he knows who it is. <gasps> will he be right? Tune in tomorrow night and we'll find out what happens next. I will see you then, bye.